Welcome to the Wolverine.com podcast video version. I am John Borton, and I, we're here with Tom Crawford, our man in East Lansing, who comes to us on a variety of Michigan sports topics. Certainly, none bigger. And welcome, Tom. I will say that. Oh, it's uh, none, great to be here. None bigger at this point than the fact that the big man himself, Hunter Dickinson, is back for his junior season in a Michigan uniform. How big is that? It's huge. And I think we, you know, we all figured it was going to happen. Uh, thankfully, it did happen. You know, I've, I've, I've said I, I've been on a couple of radio and podcasts about uh, I was watching the NBA this weekend. You know, once college basketball is over with, I know a lot of people don't like the NBA, but I immediately put all my basketball, uh, you know, passion into the NBA. And I was watching uh, parts of all, all you know, eight games, you know, four and four. And I'm thinking, I, I, Hunter's not ready to fit into this nonsense. I mean, it was, I mean, it's a 94-foot game. I mean, he can be, I, I think he's going to be a role player in the NBA when he does get to the NBA. Um, but the sheer athleticism is not there for him to, to fit into that grind that I saw on this weekend at the, at the highest level. So uh, it's great, and I, I'm sure the NIL was nice and sweet and enticing, and he likes being around here. He's hanging around Comerica. He's going to the spring game. He's living in southeast Michigan. He's living in Ann Arbor. It's all good, man. I'm certainly happy he's back. Well, there's no question that uh, he is a major celebrity around the Michigan campus, yeah. and that attention has to, to be fun, and, and he enjoys that. What would you say, though, out of the two things that you mentioned uh, could have been the bigger factor here? Could it be the fact that um, scouts are not looking at him as a surefire NBA prospect with uh, some of the athleticism uh, uh, issues that we're talking about? Or could it be that uh, he would he understood he could make some money coming out playing basketball uh, for somebody somewhere, but it was more attractive given the fact that we are in the NIL era that uh, he knew that he was going to be able to not only uh, have some financial security there, but also have another shot at uh, a Big Ten title, uh, another year in school, another, uh, another shot at a run in the NCAA tournament. Well, you can notch off all the above of what you saw. You really framed it there really nicely, John. That's exactly all those things come into play. I think the NIL certainly has changed the landscape. You know, we've talked about it before. I don't mean I don't mean it's in a negative way, but it's you know it's basically legalized cheating. Um, you can you know players can make money. I mean, it used to be the joke when when when, when guys would leave Kentucky to go to the NBA. It's like how are they? Why are they doing that? How can they afford the pay cut? Go, go mm -hmm. from Kentucky to the NBA. I know that was a wink-wink joke. But in reality, I think for Hunter Dickinson, Dickinson it would have been uh, a lesser amount of, um, of revenue generation because I don't think he would have necessarily made an NBA team. I don't think he would have got drafted, which that's kind of a humbling experience. If you come out early, you don't get drafted. So say he went to the NBA and played in the CBA and got his you know 150K a year, which is all well and good. But he can stay at Michigan, develop his game, have Juwan Howard to help him. Go chase a Big Ten title. Go see how far he can go in the NCAA tournament again. Maybe get to the title game, Final Four. Who knows? Uh, and and then make upwards. I'm hearing. Now, I'm, this is just you know, sprinklings of you know sources here and there. Up to three million dollars in NIL. I mean that's crazy. But that's where college basketball is headed. If they decide to give us that for this podcast, we're going to stay here. We're not. We're not moving. We're, yeah, we'll, I, we'll, we'll do the podcast. We'll do the Wolverine.com podcast until we're like 90, 95, JB. I'll have that uh, vibrancy for, for living a long life if that happens. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you know, it doesn't matter what NBA scouts say at this point in terms of his skills. Um, he is going to be a dominant force once again in the Big Ten and in college basketball. And for Michigan, that, that changes everything, I think. Uh, if you have that centerpiece, that literal centerpiece to build around, uh, suddenly – the rest of your lineup just got better. Yeah, I mean, he's a uh, matchup nightmare for, I know, one particular school, Michigan State. I mean, Hunter played great in both those games, especially the second game. We had 33-9 and nine and 
Uh, he was ab- he just dominated that game. Uh, man among boys is you know Michigan State was throwing everything at the kitchen sink trying to stop them uh, in that seventeen point win. But yeah, there are certain teams that match up uh, better with him than others, and some that don't, like I just cited. But um, I, I you know when I look at him, um, you know he I know he's seven foot wingspan. He's got great hit. You know he's got all that that baby hook. He's really got that down, and he's he's improved his perimeter game quite a bit. But he could, you know, he could get in a weight room and buff up a little bit more. I mean, I mean I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm focused on his physique that much, but I mean, he could be a little more cut up, if you know what I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. And and you imagine, I mean, then you're really, you know, and you can do that at different, you know, stages, uh, you know, of, of of your career. So um, I, you know, I, I just think that there, the ceiling is still fairly high for him. And I just like, and I think he's, I think he's excited about what Juwan's going to have around him. Uh, so he won't be doubled down so much and, uh, you know, having to rotate that ball off. Maybe if, you know, if, you know, obviously uh, if they, Michigan could conquer that, get some better uh, perimeter shooting, which I think is coming, starting with mm-hmm. Jet Howard and some others, um, and maybe the transfer from Texas Tech, who knows, uh, that can free things up even more for him to work down low. Well, we're going to talk about that, but but first, you mentioned Michigan State. I'm, I've got the perfect uh, pregame scenario for the first Michigan-Michigan State game next year. Uh, since Hunter Dickinson's going to be back uh, with with his uh, with his strong relationship with Tom Izzo, I think that uh, <laughs> as a pregame peace offering, you you send uh, uh, one, a, a box of Juwan Howard's famous uh, pass around donuts. And, yeah. uh, and Hunter Hunter walks down to Tom Izzo and hands it to him before the game, and then then he's free to to dunk on the Spartans and and bark a little bit. Yeah, just like Juwan Howard does at the opening first day of class down there at the Diag in Ann Arbor, passing out donuts to all those students, and uh, you know that, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, it, you know it's gonna be you, you bring up an interesting point because Hunter has really dug himself some, you know, he, you know he's got the stairs of the benches and he's irritated a lot of he might be the. You know the, the the guy that everybody hates uh, next year. Um, you know who who knows, but uh, he certainly hasn't helped his cause in that. But maybe he thrives on that, and maybe that's what hey. get his motor going. Whatever works. Uh, just if you, if you get some people the off their game, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you what, uh, he could be joined by another uh, two very impressive guys, but. They took a different route. They did not. Uh, we're talking, of course, about Musa Diabate and Caleb Houston. They didn't say, okay, we're back for sure. They are going through the process. They've announced that uh, they're going to go through the NBA process. And I wasn't surprised by that at all because they're in a situation where they want to he- hear that feedback. Uh, Hunter Dickinson has gone through it once and has uh, had people weigh in. But uh, these other guys, they want to hear what the NBA has to say. You're prediction on how this might go and whether or not uh, one or both will be back in uniform for the Wolverines. Yeah, first of all, I think it's great. I mean, it's like uh, I had Tim McCormick on a podcast. He talked about that was a great process for Hunter to go through last year. It got, you know, opened his eyes what he needs to work on. Uh, He didn't need to go back because he still he still learned from that process. I think it's their time, Musa Diabate and Kayla Houston, to learn that, to have an outsider give you the reality check. I think I think they're I think we know what they're going to be told that they're not ready. Um, Musa Diabate, I mean, sometimes he he looked, you know, he'd travel, he couldn't handle the ball down low and congestion and things like that. He could grow a lot, but I, you know, I I don't know. Um, I can't get a read on Musa. You know, I I don't know. You know, he could do a variety of things. He could, uh, if he's bound and determined to, you know, he, he's going to go pro. He could go international. Or um, and then Caleb is an interesting one. I, I think I don't think he's going to go to the NBA. I think he's either either going to come back, or he might even do the transfer portal. I you know I hope that doesn't isn't the case because I think we're finally we've suffered through all the 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 growing pains of Caleb Houston. I think the payoff for us Michigan fans is next year. I hate to see some else team benefit from it, but you know if Michigan gets some uh, new blood coming in here. Um, you know, the, you know, like I said, um, with, with, the, with the portal, um, I don't know. And nothing surprises me anymore. We're going to find out in the next few weeks. Yeah. Obviously. 
Well, and one other thing we'll find out about, uh, you referenced his name already, but uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. out of Texas Tech, a reported uh, potential transfer. Uh, we know that he has had contact with Hunter Dickinson and, uh, you know, a, uh, a big guard, small forward. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about him a little bit and what you've seen out of him. Well, I saw him. He was funny. I'm watching the uh... – I was at a Michigan game in a suite. I was watching that game, that famous game that they had, Texas Tech and Texas. And he had a really, he had a really I go, that guy's pretty good. We could use somebody like that. And ironically, <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he might be coming to Michigan because that's what Michigan needs. I mean, that's the thing that we all were banging our heads against the table. Uh, like, are, is there going to be any uh, consistent perimeter shooting? Sometimes cables on, sometimes off. Boy, he would be a great asset. I, You know, it seems seems like this, uh, this dance routine has been – it's been long and it looks like it might happen. I don't know if it's an admissions thing. I don't know what takes so long on all this stuff. You want to find out. Um, but maybe it's like, who's coming back. I mean, and you know, you know, you know, Kevin Houston, you know, his decision might, well, it's like, who's coming back. Who am I competing against? Maybe that's part of it. It's like, this is so difficult for college coaches to fill their roster. It's like trying to fill a plane. I keep using that analogy. You want a full plane, so you overbook the flight. And I and am... The, and then they cancel the flight. And then they can't... Yeah, yeah there's that too. But, my <laughs> point, <laughs> but anyway... I know, I know. You, you get what I'm talking about, which is why Jay Wright left college basketball a little bit earlier. I mean, you have to compete every day in the portal and uh, the NILs and all these moving parts are driving coaches crazy. Sure. Beeline was smart enough to get out of that before when you saw that nonsense coming down the road. Um, so, um, God, it's just you don't know what you got until June 1st. Yeah. Beeline was smart enough to get out of college basketball when he did, uh, but uh, did not, not, didn't have the foresight to avoid jumping into an NBA situation that uh, was a <laughs> – a mess yeah, so yeah anyway he's in a he's in a better spot now uh yeah let's let's shift gear well before we do before we shift over to football and i i've got a little football on my mind because we are right now working on a publication that you uh you tend to enjoy and promote relentlessly yes, that would I be the, the uh wolverine football preview but uh before we Get away from basketball. I just want to to have you weigh in on give me a. I know there are a lot of things that we don't know yet, but if uh, if it, it would everything went in an optimum fashion for uh, the way Tom Crawford looked at it, give me a starting lineup for basketball next year where <laughs> where you would start things. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, let's go. I don't have, I got to think of all the names now. Um, you know, obviously Hunter Dickinson in, in the post, um, you're going to have, um, I mean, Frankie Collins in my mind has got to be the point guard. I mean, he's proven that he's at one guard. Now I don't know what's going to happen at, um, you know, at, uh, the situation with Terrence Shannon Jr. You know, is it going to be him or Jet Howard at the, at the other, at the shooting guard? I don't know. And I, you know, you're trying to, I don't know if Caleb Houston is uh, is is going to come back. Uh, yep. T. Will though could be at that four. I'll put, I'll put T. Will. So I've already mentioned five games. T. Terrence Williams. If he, you know, and I, I nothing would shock me. <laughs> I swear to God in this portal thing. I mean, yeah. I, I think Terrence Williams is coming back. I think. You know, I just don't really know about everything, and that's the where we're at. But I mean, I think that would be a heck of a lineup. And I also think, you know, I always one of these guys, oh, you got to have depth and everything. I'm going flipping the other direction on this because all these successful teams like Carolina, Duke, and some of these other teams did very well with short benches. I mean, Carolina went the whole freaking half, I think, in the final four with, with, with five guys uh, in that semifinal game when they beat Duke, if I'm not mistaken. So um, just get no more than eight guys in that rotation. Make it dynamic. Make it an all-around uh, type of offensive attack, and then shore up that deep, that transition defense, and some, and obviously dribble drive penetration defense. Fix that thing because that was a problem last year. There's my wish list right there, and there's probably more wishes uh, as well. <laughs> let me let me throw one more name into the bucket. Just uh, the, as I look at it, I hope 
if uh, you know, on behalf of uh, the Michigan fans out there, that you get to see a stronger, uh, determined Kobe uh, Buffkin in the. Why do you bring that name up? But that's another one of those names. And yep. I'm not a rumor monger, but I mean, I that that's another one of those. That's another one of those individuals that it wouldn't shock me if he went into the portal. I mean, guys go into the portal, uh, you know, that's a 365 day vulnerability. Yeah, uh, it seems to me. So once again, I mean, I, I cannot wait till we do. A, we're going to do a pot when this June first deadline, when we know we know what that roster is going to be. Uh, I, let, let's really, really dive into this basketball team and get excited. Because I'm going to make this statement right now before we go on to the next topic. I don't think act, going into an athletic academic calendar coming to start September 1, football and basketball, I'm going to be, I have been more excited about the prospects of a of, of, of terrific football and basketball team combinations than this upcoming year. It's been a while. I All truly right say that well, in all honesty and i think that's well justified especially as you look at uh, the fact that dickinson's coming for, back for basketball you look at the uh, the offensive side of the ball coming back for jim harbaugh's crew and you know you mentioned the imports michigan football has another import and that would be one cam good uh six two three hundred and fifteen pounds another defensive tackle a, a spot that looked like it might be not only last year, but this year as well, a, a bit of a weak spot has grown into a, a strength for this Michigan football team, it would appear. Yeah. Okay. And, and when you say strength, it's be, you know, besides Camp Good transferring in from Central Florida, I think he's from uh, disruptive uh, on the interior line. This is what I keep saying this salivating. Uh, what Georgia uh, did to Michigan, making things disruptive up the middle. It's the stuff that Tom Brady hates in the NFL. He get he hates the agitation cone up the middle. He hates that pressure up the middle. It 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 bugs him. He can work around, you know, flank, you know, flank the the pocket and the edge rushers. He can handle. He can move and forward and dodge. But I mean, you get it up the middle. That's that's and that's difficult to have that level. If this guy's as disruptive as uh, as advertised. Michigan's going to have a, a, a heck of a defense. And, and that's going to be the that's going to be the difference, I think, between last year's vulnerability, you know, to this year's, you know, potential is an improved defense. And that's what I'm super excited about for Michigan. And we know that Mike Elston, who has taken over that defensive line, is has really stressed uh, a whole unit pressure. Not just uh, having guys come hard off the edge, but getting more out of those defensive tackles, uh, putting more pressure on up the middle, and having it be uh, an all across the board attack. So I'm I'm looking forward to the things that he does schematically, uh, and with these new personnel uh, and guys that are coming on, what happens there? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm super. You know, I I, I think with Elston, I mean, you know, he, and I remember him as a player back in the you do, you do as well. Obviously, he was kind of you know, a gritty guy. You know, he's a he's one of the old school guys. Um, and that that and he was at Notre Dame in high acclaim. Um, I I think that's going to be a difference. I'm not saying what was but what was preached before was was a bad thing. You know, and obviously, you know, that superstar a one year uh, D coordinator there that worked out pretty well. But, um, I, you know, linebacking, you know, there's some uncertainty in there um, that uh, of the of the three levels, you know, I don't you know, we don't really have a read on who's going to be a dominant player in, in you know, in that regard. I mean, who, who do you think is I'm going to throw it at you. I, I'm curious to know who is going to emerge at, at linebacker because of the three levels. It's the one that people are not seemingly talking about as much. Well, and that's interesting because. Uh... <laughs> that was one that uh, was brought up uh, right from uh, the end of the last podcast because somebody said, "We why don't you talk a little bit more uh, about linebackers because, uh, you know, that others share your concern. I'll tell you what, where it starts for me, linebacking-wise, is Junior Colson. Yeah, here's a kid, here is a kid that has uh, NFL talent. 
that hasn't been fully developed, uh, but took, I mean, as a linebacker, that's, that's not one of the spots where you necessarily plug in a, uh, a true freshman. I remember even as a redshirt freshman, uh, uh, Jared Irons at doing what he did. And uh, that, was a, that was a big deal because it takes a while for those guys to, uh, to adjust and to do all the things that uh, they're, they're, they're in the middle ground, you know, where they have to do a lot of reads and a lot of, uh, a lot of things that uh, are, are both physically and mentally demanding. But I, Junior Colson is a guy that uh, showed me enough as a true freshman to believe that he is going to be that guy that takes the huge leap this year. And, uh, and certainly they will build around him. But, uh, but I, I, to me, he's the guy to keep an eye on. Yeah, and then Michael Barrett, a guy who has seemingly been in the program forever, and seems like he's been there around. You know, where where is he going to be? You know, I mean, he wh- where's his status at the wheel linebacker? Is is he one that's going to play more or have a more dominant role? I mean, when he went in there, things got better. I mean, he did some tweaking. Remember that last year? Yeah. Um, I, I you know, I mean, these are things that I guess we'll learn. Um, Big Ten Media Days, and and, and then we if we ever have a media day for Michigan. I wish we had one of those like we used to, where you could get breakdown uh, individuals. Maybe uh, they don't do that anymore, but um, post COVID. But uh, I think we'll know more later in the summer what that where that linebacker. I mean, I'm curious to know what his situation is. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, certainly been around for a long time, and they found a way to use him. And, and you know, we realize that you've got a def- different defensive coordinator uh, now, and he may see uh, Barrett in a whole different light than uh, than did his pre- predecessor. We know that they're going to be doing a lot of things in uh, similar ways, but, uh, you know, different guy sees and, and everybody sees that as, hey, this is a new opportunity. Uh, it's it's a start over, all that kind of thing. Um, I would also say keep a keep an eye out for Jalen Harrell, because I think that that's a name that you're going to yeah. hear more as well. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and as we as we look at you, you, you say, OK, well, how much is is Barrett going to do? So much depends on. All right, who who's the guy that is uh, is the the younger guys that are really coming on and could uh, could push because you know we we were thinking uh, uh, Carson Barnhart quite mm-hmm. possibly as your guy at uh, right tackle, and then all of a sudden Jim Harbaugh in the middle of spring ball says, "Hey, Trent Jones is just." blown up and, yeah. and taken charge over there. So that's the kind of thing that that we will see between now and that opening game. Okay, we understand the guys that are established and have been around. We know their names. Who are the guys that might make that extra push through the summer, through fall camp, that all of a sudden they're they're going to emerge? Yeah, and I'm I'm a big fan since that experiment back in the eighties, uh that Jimmy Johnson did in Miami of taking his uh, his his best secondary guys and beefing them up maybe 10, 12 pounds and put them in linebacker where he had that lateral speed. Remember that concept? And I, I want I like I like speed at linebacker. I'm I, I want a bunch of Devin Bushes out there. I'm sorry, I'm Brady. Um, that's what well, I if want. If you had a bu- if you had a bunch <laughs> of them, you you'd be in really good shape. Not just a stomp on the ass. I mean that's fine and good, but I mean beyond that, what you know his capabilities and. And I, you know, I think when I look over uh, the years, decade-wise, de- after decade-wise with Michigan, it's something that they really haven't had is speed at linebacker. I mean, there have been occasions, um, but I think that's what, what you know, with these wide, you know, with with you know, with a five wide on the offense, and you got a lot of drag patterns and linebackers getting matched up with with uh, slot guys. You got you have to have speed. Uh, we saw what happened with Ohio State exploited that. Um, a couple of times in Columbus, as well as in Ann Arbor. So um, I want speed, and I, I don't care what form it is. Just get that speed in linebacker, and that Michigan defense will be really good. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. I, it even as far back as 97, Michigan had the uh, the, the strength run-stopping power guys, but they were able to rotate in a, a pair of uh, pretty speedy linebackers uh, on the best defense that Michigan has ever had. So you are correct. Uh, speed at linebacker, always a key. Tom Crawford, we could do this all day, but we could. Uh, we're, <laughs> we'll wrap it up for now. There'll be plenty more to talk about as we get farther into uh, the, the NBA evaluation period. And as, uh, as, as we talk to more guys for the football preview, uh, we're in the midst of some of those conversations. And uh, I always enjoy that because you, know, you, get, uh, you get insight from, uh, from all kinds of former Wolverines as well as the guys on the present roster. And I can remember last year, I can remember so well uh, you were in the midst of this feeling of, yeah, Michigan, whatever they're, they're going to be, you know, if they finish 500, great. Yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah. They, they may, not. and I remember the intensity, uh, and the defiance and the anger of an Aiden Hutchinson in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. And he said, yeah, I know, I know exactly what they're saying. I, right. I, I see social media, let them say what they want to say. We're right. going to show what uh, what we know that we're uh, we're doing behind the scenes. They'll see. Well, then, yeah, and, that, and you know, in closing, I mean, that's what Michigan is going to have to find on that defense and offense as well is that leadership that Aiden Hutchinson brought to the table, um, and and that you know, who is that guy? Who's that guy going to be um, to to do that? But you're right, you know, having our chip on the shoulder is a wonderful thing to have. And, and I, I think Michigan is going to always be disrespected. They're going to be hated on. So there's plenty, of, there's plenty of social media out there to motivate Michigan football players, all 85 scholarship ones and the walk-ons as well. When, when they look on social media, uh, it's, it's Michigan versus everyone. So use that as your, as your method of create venom on that football There you go. Field. It's worked very <laughs> well for some teams, uh, some yeah. programs, and uh, Michigan – might as well adopt a little bit of it themselves. Tom Crawford, always great to have you with us. Thank you very much, and we will do this again soon. Always a pleasure, JB. Look forward to the next opportunity.